welcome to Grace Community. Um, we believe, isn't it a beautiful day to gather and worship today? Yeah, yeah. yeah. so beautiful. Um, so we are so glad you're here. If you are new, if you've been here a few times, um, would like to share your information, we would love to connect with you. Um, there's a lot of faces we don't know, and so one way that you can do that is through the QR code, through the bulletin, um, anybody out there at the Discover Grace wall can help you, but just to share your information so we can reach out. Um, we're not selling your information, but just to, just to say hi. Um, so um, check that out. So just a few things for today. Tonight is youth group. Youth group um, at Winter Park from 6 to 8. There'll be pizza, volleyball. So students 6th through 12th grade, um, you're more than welcome to, to check out youth group tonight. And also, um, Steve Rimley threw me an audible. Hooves of Hope is happening tonight, Church in the Barn. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's at Potomac, 5 o'clock food, 6 o'clock. Um, and the Harvest, Harvest City Boys. Yeah. So, so I won't say young and old alike. <laughs> but, hey, there's something for everybody tonight. So uh, check that out. Um, all right. So next week is the 17th. And so we have Pizza with the Pastor happening right after church. And this is a great opportunity if you want to know more about Grace Community, the, the heart of it, and also a chance to meet Pastor Jeremy and his family. So if you would like to be a part of that, um, maybe you've sat here for a couple weeks, a couple months. It doesn't matter. If you want to, to um, go to that, you can sign up at our, our website, representgrace.com, or the QR code, or just come see me, um, or tell Misty that you want to be part of um, Pizza with the Pastor. But that is happening next week. And next week is also... Um, the last week to, for us to collect the, the crisis care kits. So if you are thinking about donating, we would love to be able to, to send that off to camp, which is coming up um, at the end of the month. So, um, yeah. And then I'm going to say two words. Life groups. Everybody say life groups. Life groups. Okay, good. So I'm going to say that because in August we're going to do signups and we're going to launch again in the fall, in September, for, for um, more life groups. And so um, it's rich time. It's beautiful. We're so excited for fall. I mean, there's a lot of stuff coming down that we're just going to get to be the church and grow as a church and just bump into people and, and introduce them to the real Jesus. And so one way to do that is life groups. So keep it in the back of your mind because you're going to start hearing a lot more about it. Um, but just know that that's coming down. Um, and we would love to connect um, you with, with people um, beyond Sunday morning. So just keep it in the back of your mind. So, it's short. Uh, Church, will you stand with me as we continue our worship? About a year ago when we came here, um, I was sitting right down there, and from stage somebody said, I believe that God has something to say to you today. And I'll be honest, I was in a season where I kind of had forgotten that God wanted to talk to me. And you know what? I found that to be true. He showed up and he spoke that day, and um, it was awesome. And so my prayer and our prayer today is that we do change our posture to be completely open to what he's going to say to us today. So I pray that you have ears to hear as we continue our worship. God, you are good. <laughs> we have gathered here. We are so thankful that you give us time on a Sunday morning to come in and to gather together with, with people. But God, I'm asking that you you speak. You speak through Felix and, and that we're challenged at the message that he's going to send. And God, more than that, that we would hear. That we would open our palms, our hands wide open to how you're going to lead us in this life. What you're, gonna, what you're doing in our life. Maybe we have forgotten that you want to have an open dialogue with us. And so I pray today that that's where we're at. That we look up, we fix our eyes on you, and we continue the conversation that you are so desperately trying to have with us. God, I thank you for this church, and I thank you uh, for all of the people who, who step in and, and just beautifully serve so well, so that we can honor and glorify you, and only you today. God, thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you do in our life. Challenge us today to go and tell the good news. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
take a single step till I hear your voice I surrender and when my eyes cannot see it's your voice that's leading me out of darkness into Take a single step till I hear your voice. I surrender, and when my eyes cannot see, it's your. You calm the raging sea, you crush the enemy, I won't move until you speak. You break the walls apart, you heal the wounded heart, you've been there from the start.
that chorus again. So last weekend, my family got to do what most families do around the 4th of July. We celebrated by going to a, diff, a couple different fireworks displays. And as we were enjoying the shows, a thought or two came to my mind. All of us there got to enjoy the display and, and celebrate the freedom that they represented. Now, none of us had chipped in to see these fireworks. It was just a, a gift of a, of a city or an organization just a gift that we got to show up and we got to enjoy. Now, as I looked around, all of us that were there were, were different in some sort of way. There were white people and black people and Hispanic people and others. There were people, you could look at bumper stickers and see how they voted. Uh, they probably act, acted a little differently and they thought a little differently. All of us were different in some sort of way. All of us have flaws and imperfections but none of that mattered. We were just gathered together as a community, eyes on the sky, this country with all of its flaws, we were just gathered together as Americans celebrating freedom with a fireworks show. And it got me thinking, and I couldn't help but think of Jesus and his love for us and his sacrifice on the cross and how it was for everybody. Everybody gets to enjoy that. Sure, we may look different from each other. We may act differently. We certainly think differently. But none of that mattered to Jesus. His gift of salvation is for all. And like the fireworks that none of us bought or, or chipped in or paid for, with Jesus, we didn't have to do that either. It's a gift freely given for all of us. Scripture says, All who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Just as many of us gathered last weekend to celebrate freedom, we gather today in this room as a community of believers and we celebrate Jesus' sacrifice on the cross and the ultimate freedom, the freedom from sin. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Father God, we just want to say thank you today. Thank you this morning for the gift of salvation. We're sending your son, Jesus, to heal a broken, a broken world, a fallen world, I am grateful for the time that we get to gather today. We get to celebrate with people that are, are way different than us, but we get to gather each week and we all share something in common that we declare that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. God be with us as we continue today in worship of you. I ask this in Jesus' name, amen.
you hear me? Can you hear me? Amen. Um, can we do something a little bit different? Can you just stand up for a minute? There's such a beautiful atmosphere here. I just want to pause for a minute. Many times we just rush through for the sake of getting the service over. I just want us to enjoy right now the presence of God right where you're at in your heart or through your voice. Just thank Him. Lord, we thank you that you are a faithful God. That you are a God that's unmoved by circumstances, Lord. That you remain in your throne, Lord. Father, we won't move until you speak, God. Help us to listen, God. Help us to hear, Lord, that small, still voice, God, that speaks in our inner man, in our inner person, Lord. Father, I ask you to remove me. Holy Spirit, come and speak. We love you, God. Oh, you're worthy. You're worthy. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Father, thank you. We love you. We thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. You may be seated. Can you guys bring these lights down a little bit, please? Um, last week, I was, um, I was home because we had um, COVID. But um, I was watching the service, and Phil was talking about, um, I believe it was Matthew chapter 20, where um, the owner of a vineyard hired certain people, and they came at certain times of the day. But the amazing thing that stood out um, to me about this story and Phil's message was that the, the, the owner of the vineyard rewarded or paid everybody the exact same amount, regardless of the time that they started to work. And Phil's message was about God's generosity. How generous God is. You see, there's folks here that probably uh, been here since that window was put in. There's people here that started their journey when mom and dad used to bring them in their little baby strollers and, and, and been in church all their life. But then you have people who didn't grow up in church, but at some point, because of God's mercy, they have an encounter with God. And all of a sudden, their lives are changed, and God doesn't disqualify them. God doesn't say, because you started late in your journey, you know, I can't reward you the way I'm going to reward um, Sandy. She, she's been in my service since she was a baby. See, aren't you guys grateful that God doesn't think like we do. Because I thought about Phil's message and one thing that he said was, I would be a little upset. If I work 10 hours, here comes this joker at the ninth hour, works one hour, and gets paid exactly what I'm getting paid. Yeah, I would be upset. And, 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 and it's just amazing how, how beautiful our God is and how merciful. And off of that, I want to kind of springboard into the message today. And, and, and I was reading, and I don't know if you guys know, I'm, I'm in college now, and I'm going to college, and, and I, I, I'm, I'm in a season in my life where I'm having to learn how to sit down and just not do stuff sometimes. 
Like, that's really hard for me not to do stuff. I got to do some things, man, right? So in, in sitting down, I, I, I was just asking God, what, do you, what is the message? What do you want me to tell him? And I kept hearing um, this message from the Great Commission, go tell. Go tell. You see, we go from the Old Testament where God is telling Moses, come and see. I want you to come and see, Moses. Then Jesus shows up and Jesus says, now I want you to go and tell. You see, because if God has truly been so gracious to us, how gracious should we be to others? In uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 through 20, we find the Great Commission. Also, if you guys go to your, if you guys have your YouVerse uh, Bible app, the whole message is in there. You can uh, follow through um, there too. In, in Matthew uh, chapter 28, verse uh, 16 through 20, it says this. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go to. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Now, mind you, this is after Jesus has been crucified and resurrected, okay? Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Watch this. And teaching them, and teaching them, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. I want to kind of park here for a little while, right, because a lot of times, at least in my head, right, growing up, in church and leaving church, and then as I got older, coming back to church, I, my idea of making a disciple was coming to Sunday school, right, and sitting down with some teachers and hearing some really good Bible stories about the flood and about God, and, and, and there was even songs that we sang about, um, um, uh, what's the guy that was in the tree? Somebody help me. Zacchaeus, you see, you guys were at the same Bible class I was in. <laughs> And we hear all these stories, right? And then what happens is we leave Sunday, right? And we get into life. And then we come back Sunday, right? And we hear the same thing. But my question is this. What are we doing with that information? Is that information becoming transformational in our lives, is it applicable to everyday living, or are we just listening to some fairy tales? Because if the word of God is truth, and I read somewhere that it says, the truth shall set you free, you shall know the truth and the truth, but I read somewhere else that it says that Jesus is truth. So what it's actually saying, that if I know Jesus, then I know truth. And if I know Jesus and he is truth, then I will be set free. Right? So what are we doing with the truth that we're learning? Are we learning? Because if we're learning, then we should be applying. Just because I go to school and I get a degree in how to be a mechanic, right? Right? And I could break down a Hemi. I could tell you what a 350 is. I could tell you what a big block is, a small block. I could tell you all the parts of this vehicle. But I myself have never been in a garage. Am I a mechanic? Y'all can answer that. Okay. So what makes me a mechanic? What is it? Doing it. Experience. Application of what I learned. So what makes us believers? Doing. As you go. Good morning, sir. How are you? Let me hold the door for you. It doesn't always have to be, have you heard the good news? Oh, are you? 
I see you're having trouble changing your flat. Uh, can I help you? Okay. It's a really nice day. At some point, I guarantee you, Holy Spirit will open up the opportunity for you to share Jesus. See, I don't know about you guys, but I was dead. What do I mean by that? Rock bottom. You guys ever seen this movie called uh, Groundhog's Day? Anybody? Okay. I think it's, um, I forget his name. It's not Chubby Chase. Bill Murray. Okay. So in this movie, Bill Murray is having the exact same experience every day. No matter what he does, he has the same experience the next day. He tries to kill himself. doesn't work. Same day over and over. Okay. So you guys get the idea, right? I lived this is what I mean. For 25 years, I was addicted to heroin. And my life was the same from the minute I got up to the minute I went to sleep. And my life consisted of this. I get up, I go hit a lick, meaning I need to make some money, right? So I hit a lick, get some money to give it to the dope man. Now I'm broke. And now I'm starting the same cycle all over again. Every day for 25 years. I have an encounter with the king of kings. Yes. Are you tired? Are you done? Because I can show you a better way. As a result of my surrender. I went from this kid who had these Bible stories in my head to an encounter with this God who now lives in my heart. As a result of me taking my head knowledge and applying it, God has become so real. God is the reason I move. God is the reason I live. God is the reason I do everything that I do today. I don't think about, I don't think about the consequences of living for God. And a lot of times... There are songs that we sing that I'm going to be honest with you. I pause sometimes and I'm like, I don't know if I want to sing that. Why? Because it says, break me. Break me. Take everything from me. If we knew what we're really asking God to do, we would pause. Because what you're saying is, God... I'm surrendering, and I'm willing to give it all up. And because God is who God is, he is going to take you up on that prayer. And all of a sudden, this relationship you were in that never really was supposed to be part of God's plan, but you said it was, all of a sudden, that thing starts to fall apart. And now you're saying, God, can you fix this? And God's like, well, you told me to take it away. You see, it says on, um, in John chapter 20, verses 19 through 21, it says, On the evening of that first day of the week, which is Sunday, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And he said this. He showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said this. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. 
And this is an amazing thing that's happening here in the New Testament. You will read where Jesus says several times, I am. I am. What Jesus is doing for the Jewish people, when Jesus said, I am, they understood exactly what he was saying. Because if you go to the Old Testament, when Moses has an encounter with God, Moses says, who should I tell him send me? Tell him I am sent you. See, if we understood that when Jesus says, peace be with you, as the Father sent me, I am sending you, we would understand that the God of creation has just commissioned us to go, to go and tell the world. Go and tell people that there is a better way, that there is a way out. You know, we think that everyone knows I, I, in this class I'm taking, I'm finding out that, that not everyone knows who John the Baptist is. Just because I do doesn't mean you do. A lot of people don't know that, um, that Jesus was born of a virgin birth. You tell them that and they're like, what do you mean? See, a lot of times we think people know and the Holy Spirit will put a little edging in our heart and say, you should probably talk to that person about me. And in our head, oh, they, they probably already know. They don't want to hear about you. Now I'm having a dialogue with Holy Spirit, right? I'm telling the Holy Spirit what I think he should do, right? Because he's telling me what I should do. And I'm saying, but I think you're wrong. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you guys still with me here? Amen. Amen. See, God has been so good to me that I can't help but tell the world about him. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, it says this. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. A worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. Not only is the calling to go and tell the world about Jesus, but also I am to partner with Holy Spirit in presenting myself holy before him and rightly handling the word that has been given to me. We all have a gospel. And what do I mean by that? Not that we're making up a gospel. There is no other gospel but the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was dead. He is risen and now seated at the right hand of glory, right? And by his blood we are covered. But each and every one of us in here has a gospel. And that truth is that we were dead, that we were lost. And God somehow in his mercy chose to say, Bryce, I want you. And as a result of God telling Bryce, I want you, and Bryce answering that call. Now Bryce is mentoring his son. Bryce's mother's coming. Her friend is coming. Jared is coming. And this chain event of things starts to happen because he was obedient. You see, we got to stop looking at the world as a me. See, I, I, I'm real selfish. I'm very selfish. Right? And everything is about me. And poor me. How dare they? Right? But as I'm getting older and I'm starting to mature, right, I'm starting to, to, to just move back and look at the bigger picture. And when I look back and look at the picture, you know what I see? I see you guys. Wow. This isn't about me. This is about the church. This is about going beyond these walls. This is going into Danville, Tilton, Ridge Farm, surrounding areas and telling people, do you know about my Jesus? <laughs> C. 
see, it is you and I who are called to go. Three questions. And I would write these down if you want, or else you can find them in there. And I would not answer these questions now. I would ponder these questions for the next week or so. I would really meditate on these questions. And I'm not asking you to do something that I myself have not done. Okay? Question number one is, what is holding you back in telling the world? Question number two, are you telling the world? And question number three, and this is very important, who are you doing life with? Who are you doing life with? See, the religious folks come upon this scene, right, and Jesus is eating. And there's some undesirable people there with Jesus eating. He said that there was tax collectors, notorious sinners. Jesus is sitting down and eating with them. See, and even myself, I find myself sometimes, I don't know if I should talk to that guy. He's really messed up, though. He's really, he's gone. See, I have to remember, and I tell people when we do RU on Fridays, because I am a selfish person, I come to RU week after week, after week, and, and I'm just being transparent, right? And, 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 and I made our you because of me, right? Because it helps me to remember. Helps me to remember and to keep up front that I was there. That I am no different than them and they are no different than me. The only difference between them and I is that I made the decision that I said I'm done. I don't want to live like that anymore. This is just not working out any longer for me. I don't know what to do, but I don't want to do that anymore. So I come across this scripture in the Bible that says, the ways of the wicked are these. And it is listing the ways of the wicked. It's describing me. Everything. And then it says, but the ways of the righteous are as such. And I am having this moment with God at the rescue mission in this bed. And I'm saying, God, I know these ways. I don't know anything about this. And for some reason, my Cognitive thinking kicked in. And I said, if the ways of the wicked are these, and I've experienced that. And these are the ways of the righteous, but I haven't experienced it. This might just be true. I just haven't experienced it. So I made a choice. I made a decision. God helped me, and as a result of that, I started to see the ways of the righteous man in my life coming into fruition and walking and being blessed and being favored and being protected. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread, and this is now a reality in my life. And I'm walking in the promises of God, and it has nothing to do with me. It has to do everything that God has done because he is not a man. He cannot lie. So his promises are yes and amen. Matthew, before I read Matthew, I want to read a little note that I, I said. There are um, questions that I ponder. These are questions that I would ponder for the next few weeks and really look at myself and ask these questions. Am I a disciple of the Lord? 
And if so, what does that look like in my life? In Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, it says this. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony <coughs> to all nations. Then the end will come. How then, my dear friends, is this gospel of the kingdom going to be proclaimed if you and I aren't the hands and feet of Jesus? Go and tell it on the mountain. Can the band come up, please? Go and tell it on the mountain. For I was dead, and now I'm alive. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall have life and not perish. This then should be our proclamation daily. As we do life, may it never be that we are silent about God's generosity. And I'll end with this. You guys can start playing whenever you want. I'm about to start crying here in a minute. No, I got allergies. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 through 29 says this. And I want you to really consider what I'm about to read, okay, because it's the word of God. For consider your calling, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were nor of, no, of noble birth. And this is my favorite verse. I, I recite this all the time. Where's Luke? Is Luke here? Check this out, Luke. You know what's right here? It says this. But God. But God chose what is foolish. What is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. So then, my friends and family, you and I may be considered foolish for believing in this God that was and is to come, and maybe God has chosen us the foolish things of this world, the broken, the lost, the disenfranchised, the misfits, to, sh to shame the wise of this world. World without end, my friends. Thank you.
Amen. So I, I leave I leave you, Grace Community, with a challenge this week. Go and tell. Go and tell of the goodness of our God. Go and tell him that we serve a gracious God who doesn't care about your beginnings but is worried about your end. A God that loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. I love you guys. Have a blessed week.